Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be checking out 10 basic jazz guitar chords that are absolutely essential if you want to start playing any jazz standards. There are basically five chord types that we need to learn, which are major 7, minor 7, dominant 7, minor 7 flat 5, and diminished 7th, and we're going to be learning those with a 6 string root and a fifth string root, so you don't have to be kind of jumping down, up and down the neck too much. Um, all of them I'm going to be showing you so that we have a bass note and three notes of the chord, right? This is a, a really common approach to kind of jazz rhythm guitar. Um, it's usually played done using finger style. You could you know, you can kind of do it with a pick, but it gets a little bit more awkward. And if you're getting into jazz guitar, I'd really recommend that you start off your thumb. For all of the chords that have got the, the six string root, we're going to be using the thumb on the thicker string, on the six string. And then fingers one, two, and three are going to be playing the fourth string, the third string, and the second string. So it's kind of like a little grabbing motion where the thumb is playing the bass and the three fingers are moving at once to play the chord. Very common kind of jazz thing. If you get used to it as an idea, it'll really help if you want to get into your walking bassy sort of stuff as well, because then you've got your chord. You've got the kind of thumb doing the little bass thing and the fingers doing the chord part as well. It's a really good, good idea if you're getting into jazz to, to practice that up. So all of the chords we're going to be doing have that same kind of format. So a bass note and the three notes. Even when we go to the fifth string root, the three fingers are going to be staying on strings two, three, and four, and the bass note will be string five. So essentially for the fifth string root chords, we're going to be playing the middle four strings only and not playing the outside two. So uh, let's get to a close-up and check out how to play these grips. So starting off with the six string root chords, this first chord we've got is a G major seventh. Okay, that's third fret, nothing on the fifth string, fourth fret, fourth fret, third fret, nothing on the thinner string. Now the easiest way if you're new to this is to look at a regular kind of B minor bar chord, which if you're getting into jazz I'd assume that you'd know your kind of basic bar chords by now. So that would be a B minor bar chord if you just lift your first finger up and plop it down right there on the third fret of the thicker string, we get a G major seventh chord. Okay, now the second chord we're going to look at is G7. Now I've got my third finger down there, but hopefully you remember that I said we're just playing the sixth string, the fourth string, the third string, and the second string. So you could kind of play the G7 like this. In fact, this is quite a common way to play a G7. I don't tend to play it that way too much. I'd play it like that very often, so without even putting that third finger down. But if you're new to it again, it doesn't hurt to have the third finger down in case you accidentally hit that string. But you could otherwise just be playing it like that. So third finger down doesn't make any difference to the sound. Okay, that would be G7. Worth noting that our G major 7 and our G7 are only one note different. It's just this note changing to that note. There's G major 7 and there's G7. So it's just this note F sharp moving to F. Major 7, dominant 7. Okay, this is to help you kind of remember the different grips. So the next chord that we're going to look at after that is minor 7. This is a little bit of a different kind of fingering. Some people might find this a little bit weird if you're not used to doing it. Uh, the easiest way to think of it is a B flat major bar chord. And then you've moved your second finger over and put it on the third fret of the thicker string. This would be a G minor 7. Okay, really essential one, this one, okay? So we've got major 7, dominant 7, minor 7. Okay, and again, you could actually just play it like that if you wanted to. You could play it major 7 like this, dominant 7th, minor 7. Okay, it's really important to see the way that the chords kind of relate to each other, that it's uh, only simple changes from each different one. So this is the more common way to play a minor 7 in a kind of jazz environment. You could do it that way, but you're really in risk of that note coming out, and that's a, not a really nice note, especially on a minor 7th chord, the 4th. If you accidentally hit it, it just sounds bad. So I think that's the reason it's more commonly played that way. So the next chord we got is a G minor 7 flat 5. 
So it already says like G minor 7, but it's got a flat 5. The fifth happens to be this note on the second string. So if we flatten that, we get this chord, which is a G minor 7 flat 5. Okay? A little bit odd. You could think of it almost like a B flat minor chord, moving your second finger over to the third uh, fret of the thicker string and your first finger down where it was. Third fret, nothing. Third fret, third fret, second fret, nothing on the thinner string. Okay? Really important one for what's called a minor 2 5 in a jazz kind of context. Great, you know, slightly unusual kind of a chord, but definitely one that you have to know. And the last one of the G grips is this one. This is a G diminished seventh. So again, it's almost exactly the same as that, but we've moved this note now down a semitone. We've got third fret, nothing on the fifth string, second fret, third fret, second fret. So we're doing a little bar with the first finger there. So you might want to start with that if you're struggling, putting your third finger down in the third fret of the third string, and then your second finger over on the root note on the G. Okay, so that's your five grips, and I would strongly recommend you practicing. Just get doing major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, diminished seven. And just practicing going through those, making sure that you've got them and you know how to do it, and your fingers can kind of find those chords. Remember, this is the root note. So wherever we put that becomes the name of the chord. If you want to play A minor seven flat five, you put the root note on the A and play the minor 7 flat 5 chord. If you want to play a G sharp diminished 7th, there's the root note of the G sharp, and you use the diminished 7th grip. It's very, very simple this. So once you know those five shapes, you're just moving them up and down the fingerboard to find whatever chord you want. Okay, so that's the ones starting with the 6th string root. Now let's do the same chords with the 5th string root. We're moving it now to the, to the uh, root note of C. Okay, so there's our C note, which is the third fret of the fifth string. There's our first chord, lovely chord, C major seven. Okay, so we're starting here, first finger on the third fret, third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, second finger in the fourth fret of the third string, and little finger on the fifth fret of the second string could lay the bar over and play that one as well if you want, but it doesn't fit with our little pattern then. So that would be C major 7. If we lift off the second finger and make sure that our bar is holding down that third string, we got C7. So C major 7, C7. I'm just tucking that finger away to it so you can see clearly what's going on. Normally it would just kind of sit there like that. It wouldn't kind of tuck itself away like that. So major 7. Dominant 7th, minor 7. So all we do now to get from C7 to C minor 7 is little finger off, second finger goes down in the 4th fret of the 2nd string. And we've got our C minor 7, okay? Major 7, dominant 7, minor 7. Now the other chord that we needed was minor 7 flat 5. In this case, this note here is the 5th, so we want to flatten that. Okay, that's a pretty awkward fingering. This is the one that we want for a C minor 7 flat 5. So, 3rd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret. Okay? Kind of looks a little bit like a D chord shape, I guess, with a little finger planted underneath. It's just the middle strings. Okay, that would be a minor 7 flat 5. Again, just it's a C minor 7 flat 5 in this case. But if we moved it up one, it'd be C sharp minor seven flat five. It's just, you know, moving that root around, okay? And the last one that we've got with that, uh, with the C root that we need is the C diminished seventh. And the easiest way to do that is to leave those two, the third and fourth fingers down, put the second finger back down on the C, and the first finger down in the second fret of the third string. And that's how we get our C diminished seventh. You do need to be able to jump to it as well. Very common. It's that kind of, you know, gets used as a passing chord more often than not. Okay, so third fret, fourth fret, second fret, fourth fret. That would be a C diminished seventh. Okay, one more time through all of them. G major seven. G seven. 
G minor 7, G minor 7 flat 5, and G diminished 7th onto the 5th string root, C major 7, C7, seven, C minor 7, C minor 7 flat 5, and C diminished 7th. And the most important thing, once you've got your fingers around the actual chord grips, is to put them into practice. So one thing that you really want to do is get your hands on a thing called the Real Book. It's full of jazz standards, and standards are the kind of standard repertoire that you learn if you're getting into jazz. If you go to a jam night, it will be expected that you know how to play all the things you are, and all of me, and Blue Bossa, and you know, loads of other kind of tunes, like standard tunes that everybody learns. And most times, people learn them in the keys that are they're written in in the real book. It's a good idea to learn them in all keys, but again, when you're starting out, get a hold of the real book and start learning some of those basic tunes. Just flick through it and pick the ones that kind of look easy that you think you know the chords to. You know, have a look on the internet and try and find some original recordings of that. You know, particularly vocal ones, I think, is a good idea, but we're going to talk a little bit more about jazz standards in a couple of lessons time, and I'm going to take you through some of the most basic ones. But uh, definitely getting a real book and starting to put those chords into use is absolutely essential. Uh, those of you that are enjoying watching the way one chord moves into another chord, you might want to check out a little ebook that I've got on my website called the Chord Construction Guide, which takes you through exactly what the functions are of every note in the chords that we've looked at, and it gives you the other three different areas of the guitar neck, So, because there's kind of five different positions of every chord on the guitar. So this takes you through how to change one chord into another chord all over the neck. I think it's a really cool little method, and if you're getting into jazz, you're probably going to find it pretty useful, so you definitely want to have a little look-see at that. Uh, the next lesson we're going to be doing is looking at some rhythm guitar, like how to, what kind of grooves that you should be doing when you're starting out, how to play your kind of basic jazz rhythm. So uh, I hope you'll join me for that very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.